Hope everybody's having a good day. Let's see what is today, Monday. Hey, did you watch any of the bullet? Mm-mm. No? Mm-mm. I saw Hanson playing, but um, it was just five seconds. I don't even know who won the game. I was mm-hmm. clicking on different channels. So anyway, we're going to do our usual format. And I'm going to play viewers. Ben's going to give some analysis. And Spencer Zug might rate us Go Spencer if the timing works out. And I love raids. <laughs> it's like a virtual hug, a raid is. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Hanging out. Etc. Manly. Etc. Looks mm-hmm. like we have one viewer. We'll one. <clears throat> Food is approaching. Oh, but the food's already getting there? Mm-hmm. Darn. I wonder how we can get him to, to know that it's there. Oh, hey, kangaroo, yeah, how's it them. going? Yay, tier two. That's the best tier. I should probably let him know over Discord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why it's a, why I can't check his regular text. It's on the phone. Mm-hmm. How's it going, kangaroo? I've been working so hard today. Man. How come he said that says subscribed and then there's nothing there because he didn't say anything? Yeah, I guess that's right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, all right. Okay, but why did it? That is weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, other stuff's happening. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and play. Let's go ahead and play. Is it working now? It's always working. Oh, okay. It's weird. That was weird. Mm-hmm. I still don't even understand it. Yeah, let's play. Mm-hmm. Send me, you know, the, the typical challenge. <laughs> Definitely. It's kangaroo. Mm-hmm. Now you have 20 viewers. That's better than one. Yeah, that's true. It's unrated. Hey, you're eleven ninety nine. If it was rated, you could have, you know, broke twelve hundred or something. Mm-hmm. It says you're alive. Yay. That's better than the alternative. Grandmaster Gus says, go Karen. That is correct. Mm-hmm. Now you have 42 viewers. Oh, yeah, I texted you, Grandmaster Gus. That's fortuitous. Did you not get it? I wonder if I typed it in wrong, or maybe you've just been busy. Okay, wait a minute. Or maybe it was a different Gus. <laughs> oh, also possible. Darn, I don't know what to do here. Yay, Gus hey, the Rock Obama. Do one more thing and we'll get a hype train. We need a thing. Let's see. It's been delivered. No, I got to text something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yay, Barack Obama, Barack Obama gave one cent. That's a you know big thing for him. That's good. Is there a prize for playing the slowest? Well, I guess I'm winning it. It's close though. <laughs> it's a big fight. So I hope so. <laughs> Gotta win something. Mm-hmm. Go, Karen. Man, I'm cold. You're cold? Mm-hmm. Ugh. 
Grand Master Gus gifted a sub. Hooray! So close to a hype train, yet so far away. Mm -hmm. But you have 86 viewers. After Karen streams, and I'm going to stream. And then after I stream, I'm going to go home and watch the basketball game. Yay, and I'm going to sit there. And mm -hmm. now watch the basketball game. And Karen knows the two teams that are playing. <laughs> I'm going to sit there. Do you know either team? Um, Do you know what sport it is? Not exactly. Is it college basketball or professional basketball? This seems... I'm just all under attack here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know if it's college or professional? Um, no, because I was trying to figure out a move. I can't think about that right mm. this second. No, oh, you can do it. Um, no, we didn't get to a train. Terrible. This could be the first game ever on chess.com where both sides run out of time. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the world I live in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where I live. Running out of time. They should have an emote for that. <laughs> 89 viewers. Felix Frias subscribed. Hooray. I'm not even going to look at the chat. Go, Felix. This isn't... But stay there. My time is always bad. All right, you need to get out of here. Goodbye. <laughs> and not a fan of you. There we go. <laughs> Might be bad, but those guys were just we're close all again in my to business. A, to a train. Go trains. I cannot stand it. Yeah, I'm lecturing on Wednesday. I'll be lecturing every Wednesday now for obvious reasons. We don't know what the reasons are, but they're obvious. Go, hype train, you can do it. Always play Bishop F8. Yay. Still theory. We got 40 seconds to start the hype train. You guys can do it. <laughs> Grand Mr. Gus, come on, go someone. That's right. <laughs> I went. No, he means somebody should donate 100 cents to do to get the train started. Oh, I don't give a shit about those trains. Such language. You know, but I, you know, I do like to get some money. But we need $120,000 for my son to go to MIT. How about that? <laughs> Anybody? Come on. Need some help.
I knew it was going to come to that. Yay, one cent to do. Right now it's slightly less. That's good. <laughs> Spence and Zug is reading. Hooray! With, with a lucky party of 13. Go, Spence and Zug, but stay there. Spence and Zug subscribed. Hooray! He's on a three month streak. Hype train is close. You seen my helmet donated nine ninety nine. That's my favorite donation. Nine nine nine. Someone give a shout out to Spence and Zug. Like Spence and Zug could do it. He's a moderator or something. Mm hmm. Darn. Hooray! All right, hey. Go my analysis is play faster. <laughs> So this is weird. Oh, this is funny. Mm -hmm. Grandmaster Gus subscribed. Then when he was doing other stuff, it didn't help the train because he already did something. Right. But then other people kept doing stuff and his thing went away because it's the last three things. So then he gifted a sub and now it counts to the train because hmm. <laughs> it's the last three things that happened. Oh, I see. So he has to wait for two <laughs> other people. Then he can, yeah. Yeah. That was funny. Right, my yeah. game analysis is you played too slow. Next mm. game. Hey, yeah, basically, Nikki. whenever it's your move, you have to move. Okay, what? Well, you can't think tired. on any move. Or the next game, I'm going to go fast. Right, but you, 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 on any move, don't think. Mm -hmm. All right, this is all I'm normal. I'm tired, too. Okay, now, if you want to play the Tartar Kawar Makagandov, mm. then you play B6. You play Knight BD7 first. Thanks, Lost in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, now normally they play C5 or C6, but B6 is okay. Your opponent played very passively, not taking advantage of Knight BD7. Yeah, C5 is... So this is completely equal. You have no problem here. You did everything you wanted to do. Great. Okay. So you, you, you never want to play Queen C7. Also, Queen C2 is not a good move. And queen's gambits, because rooks often go to the C line, and then the queen and the rook are on the same line. So that's usually a bad square, and this is usually a bad square. In this particular variation, since he can play bishop g3 and knight b5, you definitely don't want to play queen c7. Also, you don't want to play queen c7, because not because of what I said, because the queen's better on d8, because you're defending your bishop on e7. Now your bishop's undefended. So that's not good. So you definitely want to play something like rook c8, so your rook is not in the corner and it's opposite his queen. Or you can start taking pawns. Like if you take this, you're unleashing your bishop, or you could take that. You could also play knight e4, which you did later. Yeah. Which is fine. But queen c7 is bad, and then you went back, which is good. Yeah, a4 is weird. That just gives up the b4 square. A5 is not a threat because it's just hanging. So you could play rook c8 here again. Okay, then he's got in there. Knight e4 is okay. And then knight d2 is okay. Bishop c6 is okay. That's okay. Yeah, I wouldn't take I wouldn't take this knight because the bishop is so good. Um, probably you could double up on the bubble up. So you could play queen b7. Then your queen and bishop make a battery here. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Then your rooks can go in the center, c8 and d8. Yeah, because your bishop's really good. You have the two bishops. Two bishops is good. I can't always tell when the bishop's good. Yeah, they're always well, good. Well, he's two blocked bishops. in and all the pawns, a lot of pawns are on these the white pawns, square. These pawns. I'm just telling you, I can these, tell. These pawns can all capture honest. each other. It's not a blocked position. It won't have, I know, and it's yeah. going to clear out. But you can go here, then okay. you then you connect your mm -hmm. rooks, and you're, and you're, you're making yeah. a battery. Yeah. I see it now. Okay. And this position is probably about equal. I'd probably still take black. Now you can give him an isolated pawn, mm -hmm. which you did later. You can just keep taking these things. So you could take this. He would take back. Then you could take that. 
Or you could leave that there and just attack the d-pawn, bishop f6. Because the d-pawn's weak because he played knight d2. Mm. So his knight was here. The d-pawn's defended a thousand times. Then he undefended it with two things. But just taking this and taking this gives him an isolated d-pawn. Okay, this move's okay. That move is good. Now, you, you don't want your rook here because of that. Right? Yeah. So... You want to play rook a7 and go here or here, or move your queen somewhere off the back row so your rooks can go to good squares. If you're going to move your rook, you should go to d8 because he's attacking your d-pawn. Then he attacked your d-pawn again in this position. Now your d-pawn's actually attacked too many times. It's only defended twice. Yeah. So you should either take this or defend it. Okay. Um, but you just ignored it and lost a pawn. But you have some compensation. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, because your bishop's good, and his pawn's isolated, and he has double pawns. And then, yeah, I like queen d6. I'd probably take with the rook here. Okay. I wasn't sure. I was wondering about it. Yeah. yeah, and then your time ran out here. Yeah. And here he's probably like, I don't know, plus one. It's, um, you know, like if Magnus was white, he would win. The knight d7 is a pretty big threat. You actually tried to play rook d8, which stops knight d7, and also puts pressure on the weak d-pawn and stops d5. Mm -hmm. It's probably a good move. But yeah, I mean, white's probably winning here just because you gave your d-pawn away. And so yeah. forth. Mainly and so forth. <laughs> yeah. Darn. All right, well, let's play somebody else. How's everybody doing? Hey, Felix Frias. Hey, hey Spencer. We, we need four subs in the next 20 seconds to get to level three. Hey, Grandmaster, guys, was that you that I texted, or is that a... T <laughs> Am I confused? Whoever I texted did not reply to me. And I thought I was texting you, and if I wasn't texting you... This person said, aren't you playing hand and brain with Lux today? I don't know. It, I was supposed to be in the tournament, and then I never heard back from anybody about the scheduling of it. And so I didn't get on Discord the last day. Yay, five subs from Grandmaster so Gus. So it seemed Hooray. like the organizer, thank you, Grandmaster Gus, had decided that maybe we were going to do an arena instead of... So I hope I didn't miss my match. It's been so chaotic. That's all I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But... Yay, 95 viewers. Yay. All right, let's play some. Oh, there's Grandmaster Gus. <laughs> and then your, your next Felix free us after you that. You gotta be kidding me. I don't remember the moves today. I'm so tired. I'm like, I'm tired every day. When you don't remember the moves and you're complaining about it, <laughs> we call this coarse noise complaint. <laughs> That's what it is. 95% of the chat doesn't get it. So. They do because they... No. Um, no they just, now listen. you got to be kidding it. me. That's right. I was thinking that too, Spence. They do get it. Okay, now what do I do? I think I in here. I know. It's hot in Atlanta. It's 80 degrees today. Tomorrow's 80. The next day's 80. It's going to rain a little bit. But not for a couple what days. Said. Seems like he's. Oh, I'm just going to go here. I don't remember. Still theory. And he did this last time. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what what a, um what went wrong except for that my king was not safe. That I do recall. One hundred two viewers, if you can call them viewers. Let me do that. Same. 
that's up for debate, Bonarici. And I'm a grandmaster debater, so it's not clear if you can talk about it. About what? The Portnoy's complaint. Uh, I don't remember. I know I messed this up last time. I'm messing it up again. <laughs> but I remember... Part yeah, Korshnoy's complaint I first issue. heard from Fide Master and medical doctor Steve Feldman from Michigan. Darn. S.M. Rosny subscribed. Get Hooray! Let me out. Let me out. Thanks for the sub. You're the best. Let me out. Ninety-nine viewers. That's the best number of viewers. Spencer would never play F3. Ridiculous. You can't get to sleep. Good night, kangaroo. Have a good night and a good bishop. Karen's getting close to 5,000 followers. Also, I'm getting close to 7,000 followers on Twitter, like 69, you know, 80 or something. Unless it's 59, 80, I'm close to 6,000. It's one of them. I don't know. Whatever it is, something. Scottish Demon go like when you play B6. Because it's, yeah. it's B6. Man, Gus's girlfriend said he had bad technique, but I didn't think it was this bad. I'm a simple man, even though I'm a goat. Yeah. Bishop C7. <laughs> Darn. Mm -hmm. That was a good game, Darn. except for one thing. <laughs> All right. 
right, GG. Whoa, what did I do? Mm -hmm. Oops, I clicked something by accident. It's my it's my first time. I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've all done this before. Okay. Now the last time you had this position, you played here. And I said, that's not good. You should play queen b6. And then if he plays bishop e3, you can play bishop c5. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know the theory of this line, so it could be your move is better. There's yeah. nothing wrong with your move. a6 is fine because you want to play a6 at some point. Yeah. Okay, so this is fine. Um, I'm not sure if queen c7, queen b8 is right. It might be right to just to go here so he doesn't attack your queen again. Mm -hmm. But okay, it's okay. All right. And then I probably would take the pawn also. Yeah, GG Grandmaster Gus. This is definitely <laughs> right. Okay, yeah, here you started playing not well. B6 yeah. is very bad. B6 loses a tempo, and it's, you're not doing anything. Yeah. You, you need to do something that meets the needs of the position. So you could play F5 or H5 or Bishop to D7, you know, something that helps you a little bit. Like, you know, just bishop here, just so you can never take your bishop. Your bishop's on a nice diagonal if developed. Your rook can move. You could play h5 or f5 to kick his queen away. Uh, yeah. And the tactical trick you play doesn't work. Yeah, it was. b5, yeah, because his was rook is doing. here. Yeah. yeah, bishop c5. That's a very dangerous That's what move. I was trying to yeah. stop. Now, it doesn't work even if it does work. Yeah. That's why it's a bad move because your king's on the e-file. Mm -hmm. So let's say that the rook was here and he couldn't play rook takes bishop. Okay, okay it still doesn't work because he can play queen e2 and that pins the pawn to your king because your king is there. Then you'd have to play e4 and that, yeah, it's okay. But your, your move isn't winning even if it, if it does work. But here it's just a blunder that loses. Yeah, and okay, even here you're probably not lost. Just, you know, bishop d7. Because uh, you have two pawns. And here you're pretty mm -hmm. lost. I mean, the simplest way to win is just to trade queens and take on e5. He's up a piece. But he wanted to attack. And that's also fine. Spencer suggested instead of rook e1, which lets your king go here to play bishop b5 first, then your king would have to walk up here. But I think that's okay. I mean, maybe it's still losing for you, but I think your king is you know, relatively safe there. Um, mm -hmm. What he did actually isn't that bad. And maybe he should just play rook c1 here. That's probably the best move, threatening here. Because your bishop's here. He doesn't want you to develop your bishop and then threaten the castle and play king f8. Yeah. So probably this is right. Okay, now there was incredible triple blunders here. So here I think you're losing because I don't see what to do about rook c8. Right. Um, uh, maybe I you can either. play queen d6 <laughs> and bishop d8. It's hard to believe. Let's see, then there's queen a3, queen a3, rook d8, king e7, rook d7 check. <sighs> queen a3 wins? No, king e7. No, king e7. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. So probably queen d6, bishop d8 is best. You're probably still losing, but that's... If you play queen here and bishop here, you save your queen. Yeah, I didn't even think of it. Okay, now in this position, there was a terrible double blunder. You played here, which is like four question marks, because this this is mate. They're both mate. Yeah. And then he made five question mark move. I thought you knew why you played that, but you didn't know why. So he blundered here. Now you're winning. But you blundered this, and he mated you. So what's the winning move for you? Um. Let's see. It's some town that you live in. What town do you live in? Oh, yeah. Uh, Queen E3. Queen E3. Fourth check. town. Then he has to play King F1. Then you take that with check. Now, I assume that's winning. I wouldn't bet my life on it, but it's probably winning. Yeah. Definitely going to win or draw. Yeah. that's him. He probably, like, pre-moved that. He just didn't think, you know, he wasn't looking at, at you know, mating you. He was just thinking of winning the bishop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then this is a big threat. So that was a good bluff, because if he doesn't meet you, then you have this big threat. <laughs> but you took back, and then he played there. Yeah. Unfortunate. Frankly, terrible. Never pay attention to the opponent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just panicked. I was. So that's what happened. So that was that game. 
Mm -hmm. Let me see how long we've been streaming. It's about 30 minutes. So I think I can keep playing just a little bit. It's your stream. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just drinking planning. Beer, yeah. like in 102 viewers. Mm -hmm. Yay. The reason Gus yeah, always wins Grandma's is because he, he donates a lot. He even mm -hmm. beats me a lot. Well, I mean, he's just better than me. No, but that doesn't matter. The more you <laughs> donate, the more you win. True story. I'm hoping we just hired a bunch of people to work that I'm going to get to work a little bit less and then I can do puzzles. Just so busy. If you don't want to work, I can tickle. <laughs> are the, what are the choices? Working or but, tickling? Yeah, probably you'd rather work. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I thought Felix Frias was He was. Next. Yeah, how'd that happen? So I'm not sure what happened. And Spenson's looks challenging you. Man, look at Spenson's looks rating. You were like 29, you were 22, 29 or 22, 19 when I looked. You must have gained points in that thing you did. Mm. Yeah, that was. Uh... I think Spencer's bullet rating is, or his blitz rating, USCF, is higher than mine. Mm. Probably better, too. <laughs> Gain points in the arena. Yesterday, I got a very funny text from trying to learn about 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. He said, are you streaming tonight? And I said, I streamed mm -hmm. for three and a half hours. And he said, oh. So I know that was funny. Hours. He claims he doesn't get the notifications or doesn't see them or they don't send it to him or he overlooks mm -hmm. them. But he should get two notifications. He should get notified on Discord. And then he should get notified uh, by Twitch in his email. So there should be two notifications. But... Mm -hmm, that's true. Ooh, King D7, King E8, recommended by um, uh, Nakamura and Carlson, but mainly Carlson. Mm -hmm. Oh, he said it was a mouse slip. Oh, uh, I was wondering. I wonder what he, what he was thinking of doing, Castle and King's side? I thought it was unusual. What would the mouse slip be? What move was he trying to make? He wasn't trying to play queen d7. So <laughs> I, I guess he was trying to castle. <laughs> oh, knight d7 was the intent? And he played king d7? Man, that's that's pretty much the wrong that you know wrong direction. I don't think it was queen d7, Gus, because that hangs his queen. Oh, no, it doesn't hang his queen, because the knight wasn't on e5 yet. Mm. Yeah, but queen d7 is weird, so I don't think it was queen d7 either. I think it was castles. I think that's what he mouse slipped. Spencer thinks he mouse slipped knight d7. Huh, interesting. Xan13 subscribed. I mean, he's rated 1,200, so it just seems like a normal move to me. Thanks, Xanth. You're the best. Man, I haven't seen Karen this aggressive since our wedding night. Mm -hmm. He wanted to cast so long, but chess.com is broken. Yeah, it's true. It's possible that's not the reason you got divorced to chess Viking whales, although it likely is. Yeah, the, the famous joke is, uh, uh, my, my wife said, if I go to the chess tournament, then we'll get divorced. And the guy said, so what did you do? And he said, well, I played E4 as usual. I'm so slow. I got divorced before half of you people were born. I'll show you. Is this a three minute game or a five minute game? Oh, it's a three minute game. Three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, I got divorced twice before Karen got divorced once. Terrible. True. Terrible. 
There's a movie that most of you haven't heard of called Love and Death. It's a Woody Allen movie, and it's making fun of like Russian films. Anyway, there's a scene where there, there's a woman just by herself, and she says, I don't want to get married. I just want to get divorced. A divorce is a mouse slip that turns out to be a good move. No, a divorce is more like a take back. You know, take back one, take back ten. Didn't know Karen has a channel on Twitch. She's only had it for about two and a half years, so you could, I could see why you wouldn't know that. And I've rated her several times, and she's rated me several times. Etc. Hey, did you steal future ex-wife from me? Because I stole that from Mike Shahadi. <laughs> Darn, I just never have any time. Yeah, we were in we were in in Atlantic City, and we went to Mike Shahadi's room, and he, he introduced this woman as his future ex-wife. I'd never heard that before. Terrible. Well, I'm glad to try. That was great. Yeah. I know this is. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> what I heard you talking about, your wives, what were you saying? I wasn't even like, I was just trying to, hanging on for dear life here. Yeah, I made like 20 jokes. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Some guy in the chat said he was telling his wife the move she was doing wrong, and he, she divorced him. And then I said maybe there was another reason she divorced. <laughs> okay, so you seem like you were better the whole game. Yeah, I like the way you're playing. He said that was a mouse slip, King D7. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. Knight G5, you know, it was fine. He could castle if it was legal, but it's not legal. Yeah, that's probably the right move. That's probably the right move. A5 is weird. Yeah, I like the way you're playing. And yeah, then you found this. That was good. Yeah, you play fine. It's too slow. Yeah, I don't like A3, but it's okay. Yeah, here you got to watch out for that. Yeah, you yeah. just try not to lose on time. It doesn't work because you have Queen G6 check. Mm -hmm. You can check them. Oh, okay. So it doesn't work. But, you know. And you're still better here. And, you know, you have no time, obviously. That's probably not good because he can take this way. Mm hmm and the way he took was okay, but he should take the other way. And then that's a terrible move. He should not go here because it lets you come in with check. Mm -hmm. So you should go anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, now if he plays g6, queen here's mate. Uh. So he found that. And probably perpetual's right. You're, you're better here because you either perpetual or you win. Mm. But I don't think you can win. And if you don't win, he'll play queen b3, and if his king escapes, he'll win. So I don't, I don't think you're winning here. Because the other way to play, I mean, obviously you're going to lose on time if you don't perpetuate. I didn't, so that I, was yeah, good. That's how I but The other way to play that. is rook e8, because I don't think he can. Yeah, he has to, I play, thought, yeah. he has to play king b5, but I, I guess king b5 is fine. Hmm. Oh, then queen d7 check. Oh, yeah, you're much better there. Yeah, rook here. He has to play king here. There's no other move. And then you play uh, queen d7 check, and this is hanging. All right, so you're better there. You're close to winning there, if not winning. But yeah, this was, it was better that you did this because then you didn't lose. Yeah, I didn't have any time. Yeah. yeah, so that was good. But you, you know, you when he played bishop here, skewering, you could have played queen g six check and not lost your rook. But again, you got to play faster. Yeah. G five, the only try. <laughs> With the time situation, this is clearly the best move. That's what I was trying yeah. to do. He did what I hoped he yeah. did. <laughs> And, mm -hmm. yeah, I was just trying to to get up in there. Yeah. Might, might, might be a good move anyway. 
Yeah. Let me see what the engine says. And I gotta get a tissue. There's an engine? Mm. Well, that's not the best. Ah, where's my tissue? It's so cold in here. <laughs> yeah, you're winning in the final position. Yeah. Yeah. G five is the best move, and it's equal. All the other moves are equal, also. And then H G is a blunder. You should play F G, as I said. I forgot to turn the focus off. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Now. Yeah, you're winning here. Rookie eight check is even better. Because then you play queen f7, and e6 is indefensible. I think I pre even pre I pre moved mm -hmm. that. Right, queen no, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, king king d7 or d6, queen f7 wins. Because mm -hmm. you can't defend e6. So that's winning immediately. Yeah, this yeah. is also winning, what you did. Yeah. Uh, and then. Huh, this, is, this is a good move. Yeah, good game, you're threatening, Felix. You're threatening rook d8 check and queen e6. Mm hmm. Or rookie eight. Rookie eight's actually a better threat. Yeah. Now the question is, does in this position does rookie eight win like I thought it did? No, it doesn't win. Queen b three is a draw. But it says you're winning here. Ah, the way you win is you play queen c eight. Oh, he has a perpetual. Because now you're threatening rook here, rook here. Hmm. If he plays queen here, then you can check and check and check and check and check, and you're winning. Because his queen isn't defending. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not surprising you're winning. You're attacking with two pieces. But, yeah. But that was good that you perpetual, because you definitely would have lost on time if you didn't. Yeah. So that was an excellent perpetual. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to find yeah. <laughs> any kind but of But you got to play faster. You, I you, you, try. Thinking's not I'm good. Tired. Thinking's bad. All right. Boo for thinking. All right. You got like a million people challenging you. All right. We're going to keep going. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do the games. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that was fun. Let's do another one. I think the fan's going because I turned on analysis. Yeah, it does seem to be going crazy mm -hmm. there. You got Spencer. You got Max and Jack. Chess Beginner. Man, Chess Beginner's rated 500, so he was serious. <laughs> All right. You're playing rated, so if you win, you're over 1,200. Mm-hmm. Yay. Is that Belgium, that flag? Looks like it. Somebody hooked me up. Is that the Belgian flag? I can't see so well because it's too small. I wonder if he... Um... Go Belgium. Spencer was born in Belgium before you were born. Belgium's your favorite country that starts with a B? Even better than Belize? Mr. Plow, that's my name. Mr. Plow. That's Karen's favorite episode of The Simpsons without her knowing it because Linda Ronstadt's in it. Oh, what's that? Mr. Plow episode. And then they're like, Barney, how did you sing with Linda Ronstadt? He says, we've been looking to do a project together for a while. <laughs> and then she sings in Spanish. Not better than Brazil? I don't know. I think most countries are better than Brazil. Maybe not Belize, but maybe. Is Brazil the country with that terrible leader, or is it Argentina? It's Brazil, right? With Bolsonaro, or is it Argentina? I thought it was Brazil. Either way, I look bad because I don't know the difference. Terrible. No. Brazil is Bolsonaro. 
well, then it's not better than Belgium then. Although Belgium always has terrible politicians, frankly. Mark said 85 minutes. What, what happened in 85 minutes? What? Oh, delivery deals. Oh, yeah, that is bad. Argentina's leader is way better than Bolsonaro. Probably. Bulgaria, that's a country. So far, Belgium's looking good out of all the B countries. Which country has a good leader? Man, that's a good question. I think it's um, New Zealand. I think they have the best leader. I didn't say she has the best teeth, but she has, she's the best leader. Tooth hurts. I will always be king of Belgium. Oh, Bhutan. Let's see, he still didn't yell. I'll text him again. Um, I should call him. I'm getting made it here. Mm. Nah, you're fine. <laughs> Let's see. Mm. GG, Max and Jack. Yeah, that was just bad. I'm calling him. Who? Holden. Oh, yeah. Let well, me just... If I call Hey, did you get the food? Oh, okay, cool. Great. See ya. He said, yep. <laughs> he didn't answer any of the texts, but he instantly answered the phone call. He never answers my phone calls. Yeah, I know. Ever. <laughs> when you were his age, would you answer your mom's cell phone calls? No. <laughs> I always answer my mom's calls. No, I said cell phone calls. Then, that's correct. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, let's have a look. You only lost one reading point. Yeah, that was bad, Max and Jack. You did, you did well. All right. No, no, not that good. Teenagers be teenaging. That is true. So, so you played great. Like everything's mm -hmm. great. You're, you're better here. Yeah, you played really well. Do you know how to speak Spanish? I do not. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't play G6. Yeah, I'd play Rook E8, and then I'd probably play Knight F8, put my Knight here, put my Bishop here, play C5 at some point so that he doesn't build a big center. Okay. But yeah, I wouldn't play G6. It doesn't lose. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah, him taking with the Knight is uh, something. That seems to really ruin his pawn structure. So I liked your game here. Obviously, I have to watch out for sacrifices here. Mm -hmm. But I like your position. Yeah. yeah. You played knight f4, which is funny because it defends this. But there's also a discovered attack on your knight because the yeah. bishop's here. So I was thinking you could take this, but maybe you can't. I'm not sure. Because he has bishop c4. And also, if he takes this and you take, that's also unclear. You're not getting mated because your king has e6, but it still might be bad. So it's really dangerous to take that. 
Mm-hmm. But this, this I thought was good because I didn't see Bishop takes f4. But it still might be good. It still might be okay. But yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of guys on your... He's, he's attacking with a lot of force mm-hmm. and furious anger mm-hmm. and great vengeance. So that's why g6 wasn't... It's better to put a knight on g6 where it's defended by the pawns. Well, he is much higher rated. Okay. But so I, like this, to, I like to play now In this rated. position, you could also play queen takes d4 here, mm-hmm. defending your knight and taking a pawn and threatening the bishop. And then your knight still defends this. So this might be the right move. Um, let's see what the if thing If I play says. there and then they go rook d1, then... They could go rook d1. Yeah, then, then you either move your do? queen... I'm sorry, you can't go there. You would either take... They can't take that either. Yeah, rook d1 is good. You, you'd have to take this, I guess. Knight takes here. Yeah. And then when he takes back, move your queen somewhere safe. Okay, okay. I sort of like... I like, I like white there. Probably white's just doing well here. Yeah. Let's have a look. Probably it's just good for white. Well, what happened? Sammy oh, J. Oh, oh, oh. It, it always goes to the end. Okay. Yeah, this is already losing. When was it not losing? Okay, so this is okay for you. Knight takes has to be wrong. Yeah, knight takes is wrong. You take with a pawn. You now it prefers your position. Yeah, it says you're better here. It seems scary to me. It is, yeah. So bishop f8's a move and, and queen here. Always play bishop f8. Bishop f8 gets rid of one of his attacking pieces. And since the bishop is trapped, if he takes, you take with the rook, you're defending f7 with your rook. Mm-hmm. So bishop f8 it likes the best, and it says you're a huge advantage. It likes queen d6 also, connecting your rooks. Then when you play knight f4, your queen's defending... And okay. if he ever plays bishop c4, you have knight to d5 blocking his bishop. So this is a this is your first mistake. Yeah, and after this, he's actually winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah, you didn't save g6. Yeah. Yeah, here you have to play rook g8 so he doesn't take that. Then you know your king's not very good, but your pawn structure is much better than his. Yeah. He's still winning. He has two bishops and an extra pawn. But this yeah, this loses right away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so in this position, bishop f8 or queen d6 and you're better. But knight takes f7 is just an excellent move that, you know, if he doesn't play knight takes f7, you're better. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, he's, I was wor- he's, he's unleashing I was here. worried about that move and, for the whole and game. And what's, good is, what's <laughs> good is if you play bishop f8 and the bishops are traded, then knight f4 is always really safe. Because his bishop's gone. Right, yeah. And you always want to put a knight in front of double pawns that right. isolated. That's the perfect Yeah, I didn't think do. about the bishop. Yeah. That's the kind of position where black's better unless he gets mated. Yeah, or she gets mated. Yeah. Because hey, du- you have a better pawn structure. Than, so. Yeah. Hey, double in. Hey, do you want to go over the games? or? Do I? Or what do you want to do? It's your stream. I know. You can keep playing people. Let me see. Well, there's just Spencer. Okay, so I'm going to play Spence and Zug. And then we're gonna Ben's gonna go over a couple of games, mm-hmm. and then we'll probably play more people. So, obviously, Spence and Zook is going to give me a beat down. Oh wait, Hello to Eric, I guess. Bessie. Yeah. Somebody said hi to us. Mm. 150 viewers a do. Hooray. Go viewers, but stay there. Man, my pawns are so not lovely. It's not undelicious. You could just write, it's delicious. Ooh, that's better. 
were great. What's a better word? Probably Wang Chung is better. They're perfectly cromulent words. Yeah, those cromulent words, they embiggen our vocabulary. Mm -hmm. viewers touch move yeah all right I have to here. darn there's no work good no work good two bishops what else Still theory. Now I'm gonna get forked. Let me just go over here. Ah, so I got forked. Different fork. Uh, all right, I'm gonna resign. <laughs> Darn. Good right. GG's Vince and Zug. He was a good sport. Mm. Mm. Right. Sure, we expect he's the master, chess master. <laughs> okay. C3 seems a bit uh, passive. And D5 was wrong? Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. I think most people would play D5 here. But okay, I guess this doesn't work. I mean, this is hard to meet. I guess if you play king d1 and he plays knight e4, you can always play bishop g3 safely, but your a pawn's attacked. So, yeah, probably this is why c3 is not the best move. Okay, so you played here. Yeah, then probably you're losing here, but I'm not sure. Yeah, king king d2 is probably wrong. No, actually, king d2 is fine. Yeah, bishop c4 is very bad. So in this position, he wants to play knight e4 check. Mm -hmm. And you want to get these pieces out and play rook takes knight. Mm -hmm. So you should play bishop to d3. That stops knight e4 check. And it also stops knight c2 later, which actually isn't a problem anymore. Then you could play knight e f3 or e2, then rook takes a1. Okay, yeah. And you're, you're worse because of the pawns, but I don't, know, I don't know how much worse you are here. I mean, because his B-pawns are double, too, and he has no development. So I'm not sure how much worse you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does the engine say? Yeah, here probably you're you know, slightly worse after bishop d3. Just, just slightly, just slightly. Mm -hmm. uh, and bishop d3 actually prefers your position. Because even though you're going to lose this, because he'll play, but it doesn't matter because his pawns are so weak. Yeah, bishop d3 definitely is right. Yeah. Then you're fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after this, an e4 check, you're probably just lost. Yeah. Because you have to play king e2. And now Spencer should play knight c2, but he played for a trick, which you didn't fall into. Yeah, he can play knight c2 here, and his knight's getting out. Mm -hmm. Um. But he played for a trick. He played this move, and he hoped that you would take it so he could play knight c3 check, winning the bishop. But you correctly played this. 
He's yeah. still winning here, but it wants him to play e5, attacking your bishop. So he can play bishop takes a3, and if necessary, defend his knight this way, which is very strange. <laughs> but, okay, he, but he played here, and now you have to move your knight so you can try to take that next move. But you were worried about something. I was worried about knight takes f2. Pinky Jim was, gifted I thought knight he takes was, f2. And then he gets my bishop. No, because he can. you can check that and, and the knight's hanging. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I think about it. Probably you could take this too, but that's a different... Yeah, all I right. I don't know about that. I thought it was about to be tricked. Yeah. And then I... I what but about, even, that, but even what if about he, knight h3? I'm sorry, knight h3. Oh, no, because of bishop. Yeah, you, no, no, you can move either way. Okay. Even after here, let's say that it works. Mm -hmm. You take it, he takes, and you take this. You just lost a pawn. So that's okay. fine. Yeah. yeah. So after knight f3, you're like, you know, close to losing. Close. Yeah, that's not good. And yeah, now you're incredibly lost because you gave up this. Well, this I thought that I was going to get forked, but then I didn't see yeah. the, the other fork. <laughs> right. No, you're losing here. It doesn't matter what you do. Okay. Did. Yeah, because now you, his knight's going to come here. So now you're, mm -hmm. now you're losing again. But yeah. yeah, if you play knight here, then, you know, you, you're going to get his knight. So... Even if this does work, you're still going to get his knight. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're down a pawn or you're not. You know, maybe you're not. Yeah, now you've, you give up like this and this. But, but this is very instructive for the gawking rabble in the chat. Okay, so all the gawking rabble, they were taught like castling is good. But those kinds of rules are good when you don't have any judgment. And the definition of gawking rabble is you have no judgment. So you just do whatever some guy said, and then you do that. So a good example is like Rush Limbaugh, RIP, may he burn in hell. So <laughs> Rush Limbaugh says something, and you guys are like, do -do 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 -do. then you do whatever he said because he said it, because you got no mind of your own. And that's what happens in chess. In chess, you have no mind of your own, and you're like, ah, castling's good. So then... you. Now, of course, you can't castle either way. Whether you play bishop d7 and trade bishops or play king d8, you can't castle. But what you have to realize is black's threatening knight here check. So by playing king d8, this is still a threat. So most people would probably play bishop d7 because they don't want to move their king for no reason. But it's actually this bishop is badly placed here because it's hanging to knight c3 check. And bishop here is actually a good move if it wasn't for that because it keeps the knight trapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So king d8 is a really, like, that's a, a much better than bishop d7. Bishop d7 probably wins, but this is like plus a thousand because the knight's getting out. Mm -hmm. And you have an, and he has an extra threat. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny when super grandmasters do things, which they do often, which don't follow the, you know, the rules that you learned as a beginner. The, you know, people choke on their own rage. They're like, he didn't castle, he has doubled pawns, he has an isolated pawn, his king is exposed. However, when Grandmaster sacrificed material, you guys are like, yay. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Yeah, when Grandmaster sacked material and play for an attack, mm -hmm. the gawking rebel like, yay, mm -hmm. he yes. sacked all his pieces. That's what I want to see. That's exciting. Doesn't matter if it's good or not, you just want to see that. But when they do something good that's, not usually good, then you're confused and you furrow your brow in a vain attempt to understand the situation. And then you guys are like, my engine said this move is 0.24 and Grandmaster's move is 0.23, so he blundered. Yeah. So yeah, Bishop, it was funny that you said like, I don't like this fork and then you went here. That was good. I know. It was funny. Yeah. It's not funny. It is. If you're that's, the one that can't... That's good comedy. If you're yeah. the one that can't see the fork, it's not yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah. Well, you um, saw Night C3. Hey, well, you can yeah. always, you know, you can always sub if you don't like the ads. And everything is not about money. That's right, Papega. <laughs> yeah. I can promise it. I don't make money. What is Black's answer after Night C2, Bishop D3? Oh, you mean really earlier in the game. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, so I was claiming this is good, and then Mark said it's not because of this. Yeah, he's right. It's still really good for black, but it's not as good as it should be. Yeah, this 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 makes white less losing. He doesn't. He's not the piece down now. 
Now you have to check and go here, and then the engine says this is waiting for black, but barely. This black's a pawn up, and white's pawn structures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, it really likes this e5 idea. And it actually likes Spencer's d5 and then e5. It wants to play e5, attacking the bishop, then bishop here, and then the knight's supposedly safe for some reason. I don't know. Mm. I wouldn't do that. I would never even think of that. Thank you, Xanth13, for that Terrible. guess. Terrible. But that, yeah, Mark's uh, right. Two if knight c2, then, then bishop d3, mm. and white gets a piece back, sort of. Yeah. Zaxby's or Popeye's chicken? You know, we had this discussion. I don't eat chicken. But we had this discussion about Zaxby's or... Chick-fil-A, and Spencer was in the minority, and then some. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mainly the minority. Yeah. Oh, I don't mind if you don't support <clears throat> Bengali. I know everybody doesn't have money. Go Xanth. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just, I'm just was replying to your life philosophy that Pretty everything's sensitive. about money. Because everything is not about money. But I don't mm -hmm. mind at all if you don't have it to give. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's see. Thank you for this entity, Spotted Frog. You think... Rax is long gone. Who? Hmm. Oh. Yeah, everybody likes Chick Fil A, but I'm not sure why because I've never had Chick Fil A. I like it better than um. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I like Chick Fil A's fries until I have them like twice. Then I have to take a break. <laughs> They're good until you just keep eating them, and then you're like, all right, never mind. I don't go to Chick Fil A on principle. That's right. But what if? By going to Chick-fil-A, you would win a free date with Victoria Principal. Then which principle is more important to you? Mm -hmm. I didn't make that up. Somebody asked me that like 35 oh, yeah. years ago. She's pretty old now. Yeah, but 35 years ago she wasn't. Well, maybe she was. <laughs> it was it was funny 35 years ago. We were talking about being a vegetarian, and then they, that was the same kind of joke. I love Chick-fil-A. McDonald's fries are better. Well, I mean, but Chick-fil-A's fries are vegan. McDonald's fries are not, so it's more important. Yeah, I don't like McDonald's fries. Yeah. I like Chick-fil-A fries because I like waffle fries, but I don't know why. But Champs had really good waffle fries, and they closed. I wonder if Champs is still open anywhere. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Champs. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A fries are just okay, says C.L. Smith. Champs was the best, says Spencer. I've yeah. never eaten it at Champs. Vicky Ree Principal. Lynn was Victoria Principal. Yeah. Pamela Barnes Ewing. She spent nine years. That's a good number of years. No, Victoria Principal looked good 45 years ago. Now I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think that's Stoyakovich, but you're wrong. You stopped McDonald's, stopped using beef tallow. <laughs> you guys are so knowledgeable about these. Um... No, they just say stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's pretty specific. Beef she tallow. She mother in Dennis the Menace. Terrible. Milo's. I don't remember Milo's. Yeah, today's the birthday of uh, my brother and, and me, our, our dad. He would have been 84 today. And oh, yeah, yesterday, like Portish turned 84. He was born one day before our dad was. Mm -hmm. Who says tallow anymore? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should still try to have the Feingold Memorial Tournament. Maybe that could be our kickoff weekend tournament when we have those again. But that's supposed to be in April. That's supposed to be now. It's supposed to be this weekend. Yeah. Well, we could have it late. All right. Or, or skip again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he would totally plan that. <laughs> Yeah, tallow and pedantic. I agree. No. Yeah, I like Five Guys. Yeah, their fries are very limp, I'm going to say. And I know I'm a fry connoisseur, and I'm going to say. Who's, who's, whose fries are bad? Five Guys. Oh, fries. this guy says they're the best. No, they're limp. Yeah. They're limp. In my Spencer's view. playing in the month long. Um, oh, really? Where does he say that? Right there. Oh, good. Yeah, it's, it only seems like it lasts a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, ben hasn't passed away yet. <laughs> True. Well, let's play one more, and then let's check our time. Oh, actually, we shouldn't play one more. Let's do the games. You can just play if you want. No, you don't have to do I would that. rather do the games. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because I forgot we were going to do it after Spencer's. Mm -hmm. Ben's going to show us a, a couple of games. How do I get a window they can't think. see? I push plus, and then I move it away, like this, and then I do that. 
That should do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, that should be enough. Yeah, definitely, Mick Jurgle. We would love to meet you. Well, it's not enough. <laughs> There's a lot of yelling at five guys. What? What does that mean? Why would there be yelling in there? If you want to see a funny uh, uh, yelling or noisy scene at a, at a fast food place, watch the movie Saturday Night Fever, which is a good movie anyway. And then in the middle of the movie, there's a scene in White Castle. That's a really funny scene. And one of the actors like just started laughing because it was so funny. I mean, they just like they, they couldn't help it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, watch that scene. That's a great scene. You see what I'm talking about? Mm-mm. Oh, did you see the movie? Saturday Night Fever? Yeah, it's been a while. I'm Ooh. just trying to remember. Mm -hmm. I saw it in the, when it came out. <laughs> I've seen it once since then. Yes, yeah, C.L. Smith, you should come over, too, for sure. That'd be fun. If you come over, you have to go to karaoke, too. <laughs> Wait, that's not what I want. I want this, and then this, and then this, and then this. Old making it easy. Hey, trying to learn. Hey, I heard back from that guy. You know who, wink, wink. I heard back from him, and we're going to have a call tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Maybe. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to show you two games. Now, let's see who can get it in the chat. After looking at this game, what's the next game I'm going to show you? I mean, obviously Spencer knows, but somebody else who's not Spencer. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Spencer said it's too easy. Yeah, nobody knows except Spencer. Dang. All right, say the question again. Any clues? After I show this game, I'm going to show another game. Uh -huh. And then Spencer said it's too easy. Oh, oh one that's related to this. Yeah, that nobody yet knows. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's too hard for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a hint. Yeah, you, you stole my joke, Spence. Yeah, I was going to say it's, it's Anand versus one of the top players in America. Because <laughs> it's, cause it's uh, Aronian. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, in the early 2010s, like 2012, 2013, nobody knows. I think it was 2014. But, uh, Anand won a famous game against Aronian and Tata Steele. And when the game ended, we were analyzing the game live on chess.com. And I told Danny Wrench at the time, I'll try to get Anand on. And then he laughed. And then about a minute later, Anand was on analyzing with us because mm -hmm. I got him on Skype or something. Anyway, so uh, after the game, Anand said that his game reminded, was, reminded him of this game, mm. even though this game was played before like the Earth existed. This game is like 100, over 100 years old. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. Too easy for Spencer. Mm -hmm. Now... There, there, there's two things you can do when you're sacrificing material and attacking. And top players do both of them. You can have uh, understanding. So you can be like, well, I'm down a piece, I'm down a rook, I'm down a queen. But obviously, I have more than enough compensation by doing no analysis. Or you can calculate millions of variations and they, they're in your favor. Now... What a lot of low-rated players do is they do no analysis and their judgment's really bad. Their judgment is always, I have a good attack for the sacrificed material, and if my opponent does the same thing, they don't. That's usually what low-rated players are thinking. Mm -hmm. They're thinking, I can sack material and I have great compensation. If my opponent sacrifices material, they're crazy. That's what the typical, they don't do any analysis, they just, that's their judgment. And this reminds me of a comedian who said, when you're driving a car, you think everybody drives badly but you. Anybody who drives slower than you is going too slow. Anybody who drives faster than you is going too fast. 
only the way you drive is right. And, and even Kaidanov, when he was a grandmaster, he told me as he was getting better at chess, he always thought his attacks were winning and his opponent's attacks were crazy. Even if it was the same position, he didn't care. Yeah. Then you get better at chess. So, yeah. Okay, so this, this, this has a little, you know, this has a little, you know, of both. You have to have good. Now in the opening, white played a very strange move. I, I think it was queen d2, it was something strange because the position's symmetrical. And all of a sudden, black had the advantage in whose move it was. Yeah, queen d2 is, I don't, I can't, I. If somebody asked Rot Welly, why did you play queen d2? Like if I was playing on the internet and my opponent was a grandmaster, I would assume that was a mouse slip. Because that does, move doesn't make any sense. Now, it could be he wanted to play rook d1. It could be he wanted to castle a queen side. But I, a queen d2, that's not a good square for the queen. The king is here. The bishop is here. Queen d2. Okay, so I don't like that move. And queen e7 is pretending to sacrifice a pawn. And the engine actually takes that pawn and says that it's about equal. You could just take this pawn. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty dangerous because your king is here. So, yeah. Okay, so he just, like, they transpose into, like, a symmetrical position somehow. So if the queen was here, this would be completely identical. Okay, now it's better here than here, because this is on the open d file where black's going to play rig d8. And also it's black's turn. It should be white's turn, because white goes first in chess, and so it's symmetrical. So black has two advantages. The queen's here instead of here, and it's black's turn to move. Now, to me, that shouldn't be enough for like an advantage in, in theory, but the engine says black has a huge advantage. So, I mean, obviously, if it's white's turn to move, black doesn't have the advantage, but it's black's turn to move, so he has a big advantage. Thank you, Wynot Wheatley, for this. Hooray. Today's. Okay, Yay. so Rubenstein played rook d8, and the queen went to e2. Mm -hmm. So now it's a symmetrical position, except black is two tempi ahead. Black played rook d8, and it's black's move. Okay, oh, and black castled also. So if it was white's turn to move, and white played castles and rook d1, it's completely symmetrical. But it's black's turn to move, so bishop e7, castles. Okay, now... One thing you have to do when you're playing chess is realize what, what's going on in the position. Are you up a queen? Are you down a rook? Do you have two passed pawns? Is somebody's king exposed? Okay, so in this position, it's pretty symmetrical, but it's obvious that black has more, uh, is ahead in the symmetry. Mm -hmm. So like if black played here now, ridiculous. It would be totally symmetrical. So black gets to play rook d8, and black gets to move again. Now, that means if black plays boring, solid moves, it's going to be a draw because it's symmetrical. So if black wants to punish white because black has two tempi ahead in development, he's got to punish him. He's got to do something aggressive. If he plays h6 and rook a c8, it's, it's mm -hmm. equal. Okay. So he so Rubenstein played the most aggressive move recommended by the engine. Knight e5, threatening to destroy white's pawn cover. So white played the obvious move by trading. And now you can see these bishops are, you know, bearing down on the king. And this knight's gone and this knight's gone. They got traded. That's very beneficial to black because the knight on f3 is used to defend the king. The knight on c6, which is blocking the bishop on b7. Well, now it's not. So, so white, white has a big disadvantage here, and he took drastic measures to stop the attack. Something you don't want to do, but he was afraid. The engine says it's the third best move. He played f4. So that blocks the bishop forever, and the queen is now defending g2. So it's a pretty good defensive move, but it really weakens e3, it weakens e4, it weakens g4 because the pawn here can't defend any of that anymore. So it's very, you know, not, it's not, uh, not great. 
Okay, bishop went here. It wants to go to this diagonal. So bishop b was also possible. Played e4, so it looks good. But that's also a very bad move. Rook c8 is, is okay. The engine wants to play knight h5 attacking the f-pawn because if the queen takes the knight, then the bishop on d3 is not defended. So f4, e4 is very weakening. It opens up this diagonal to the king. These pawns need to be defended. The bishop is still... You know. Okay, so he played rook a c8 and white played e5, which is a, a terrible blunder because it opens up this bishop. And the knight has both of these squares available because the queen is defending the bishop. So you can't, so he just checked on b6 and played knight g4. And white, white's completely lost here because black's bishops and knight are all over white's king and the white's pieces on the queen's side are shallow and pedantic. You can even say they're tallow and pedantic. <laughs> and so even though material's equal here, the engine says black is plus five. And that's why you shouldn't make a lot of pawn moves in chess, because you're not activating your pieces. And then white played f4, e4, e5. And while he did that, black played rook c8, bishop b6, knight g4. So black didn't move any pawns in the last few moves. He just improved his pieces. And white moved all of his pawns and totally opened up these diagonals to the king for the reason of blocking this diagonal. And it's funny, a lot of times when I show a game where one player is famous and one isn't, the, the gawking rabble are like, who's that guy? I never heard of him. The reason you never heard of him is he's not as good as the guy you heard of. That's right. <laughs> if you heard of him, he wouldn't lose so badly. Unless it's Aronian, then, you know, that's kind of people America mm -hmm. takes. Okay. Thank so... Thank, yeah. you, thank you, the God Slayer. I'm glad you like the channel. Yeah. And hey, Endeavoring. Cool. Okay, now here, the, the engine says every move loses, and this is one of the best ones. Bishop e4, trying to trade pieces and block the bishop and so forth. Mainly and so forth. Okay, black can win by playing knight takes h2, because the king can't take as queen h4 is mate. But he played queen h4, which is also winning. Also good. Um, h3 and g3 both lose, but h3 is better. Um, he didn't play h3, but h3 looks terrible, but it, it is, it's, it's losing. There's no doubt about it. So after h3, the engine says rook takes c3, always sack the exchange. Bishop takes c3. And I want to show you this variation just because I, I really like what... This is losing for more than one reason. Uh, the coolest ways to win are either queen takes or rook takes. Obviously, queen takes is funnier. This is winning for for um, for black because this bishop, you know, the king's trapped. Yeah, it's actually pretty funny. If you go here, then, you know, you're getting mated over here. That's pretty good attack for black. Okay, but let's play the right move, which is bishop takes c3, bishop takes e4. Threatening mate in one. Queen h3 is mate. If you play queen takes e4, which is a bad move, you go here threatening mate, and then when he stops it, you go back mating. So mm -hmm. he has to play queen takes g4. That's pretty cool. Right. Queen takes g4 is forced. Queen g4, hg4, rook d3 threatening the bishop, and threatening rook h3 mate. Right, yeah. Yeah. I'm a toy dragon. So, so black wins because, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the main variation of h3. That's the best white can do. Mm -hmm. White played g3. This loses worse, but it's more interesting for us. Yeah. And you can see all of black's pieces are participating. Okay. Rook takes c3. The queen is overworked. It's defending mate and it's defending the bishop. But the bishop was also defended by the knight. So he took the knight. So taking the bishop loses instantly to bishop takes. And then if you take, it's mate. Okay, so obviously, if you want to play an interesting move, after rook takes c3, you take the queen. Rook d2. 
the queen is defending the bishop on e4. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, oh, yeah, the queen's defending it. So if you take the rook and I take this, the truth hurts. In fact, that did happen. Obviously, you can't let me play rook takes. That's ridiculous. If you play queen takes tonight, then it's the same. You're getting crushed. Um, if you let me play rook takes, that's terrible. And even though black has a weak back rank, the only two open files are defended by the bishops. So if somehow you could play rook here, rook takes queen and think it's mate, it's not mate, there's a bishop here. So there's no back rank issue for black here. He's defending these squares with all of his pieces. So you can't get back ranked. Okay, the engine says bishop takes bishop and rook f2 both lead to mate in seven for black. Those are the best moves because you last the longest, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he played this. This is the most interesting. And then this is the coolest move of the game. After queen g2, black played a really cool move here. And more than one move wins, but this isn't one of them. Bishop takes is bad. So he played the best move, rook h3, threatening rook h2 mate. And I showed this position to Val Kilmer. And I told him I could stop mate. And what did he say? Um, you're a daisy if you do. Yeah, but then I couldn't. And then he said, you're no daisy. He kept telling me I was no daisy as I was dying. It was terrible. Okay. And then the game ended here. He resigned. But a, a funnier line, also winning is rook c2 with the same idea. If queen takes bishop, then here. All right. Okay. Right. And then if you play rook f3, and now you can't play rook h3, see? then rook c2. And again, th this is mate. So. so a very famous game where early on in the game, it looked like black had this big attack on this diagonal because the knight was gone. White blocked the diagonal but opened up this diagonal. So he switched diagonals, right? Okay, then he, then he had these two diagonals and the diagonal here was, was blocked. Yeah. Now most people think Rubenstein was the best player in the world and he would have beat Lasker in a match. Why didn't he beat Lasker in a match, Karen? Um, I don't know, did he die? No, they didn't play. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, eventually they both died, but yeah. Yeah, they didn't play, so then he couldn't win a match. But a lot of people think Rubenstein was better than Lasker, uh, you know, when Lasker was at the end of his, you know, of his world championship. Yeah. Rubenstein, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, rook c3, rook d2. And the thing is, a lot of modern players, even super grandmasters, when you ask them who the greatest players who ever lived were, they ignore everybody before 1940. Like, ah, those guys were no good. Okay. And obviously, you know, a guy who's playing like this with black, rook takes c3, rook d2. That guy's pretty good. Now, today, if somebody like Dubov did that, right, it would be golden. Sh I mean, it would be just, he'd be showered with, with gold. Okay. I mean, if Dubov did this today against a grandmaster, it would be the most famous game ever played ever. I mean, they'd be like, wow, Dubov is the greatest. But instead, they said, well, this game was played 100 years ago, so these guys suck. That's what a lot of the top players today say. <laughs> Frankly, ridiculous. So Rubenstein eventually suffered mental issues and ended up in a sense. And now to surprise Karen, because I don't think she remembers stuff that I said on my stream a year Interesting ago. fact, probably not. Yeah, you ready? <laughs> Is it ready to be surprised? All right, what? Like, I've, I've met Rubenstein's son. Oh, yeah? Sammy Rubenstein, about 1900, 2000. And he was old. He's not alive now. He can't be alive now. He'd be the oldest person who ever lived. But he, I mean, he was old when I met him. Cool. Yeah, he's he was living in Belgium. He says it's nineteen hundred or something. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Mm. So I met Rubenstein's son. Hooray for everybody. Sammy Rubenstein. What was Trump approved? Mm -hmm. The golden showers or some other thing? Right. A lot of super GMs today say Morphe was no good. However, there's an interview with Fisher from like nineteen sixty two and he says 
Morphy was the most accurate player that ever lived, and if he was alive today, he would beat everybody. So that's two different opinions. One opinion is he was 2,000 strength, and one is he's the greatest player who ever lived from Fisher. So I don't know. Seems like if he's placed chess and his Wikipedia page is 70 pages long, probably wasn't 2,000 strength. Know what I mean? Yeah. There's like plaques and everybody in Morphe's house, you know. So there you go. You got your first COVID vaccine, Zanth? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> McDonald's actually lied about not using beef tallow and got sued and lost. So look, look that up. Yeah, remember to spell Fisher wrong. That's important. Yeah. What was the fish ta tallow? I mean, beef tallow. A oh, beef tallow, man. Yeah, no, they were claiming that their fries were vegetarian. Then they weren't. They got sued and they lost. Oh, I yeah. see. All right. Now and we'll look onward. at the next game, which, I mean, Spencer knew what it was, and Mark obviously, but he didn't say anything. I didn't get my second one yet. Don't you go Friday? Friday. Yeah, soon. 11.30 a.m. Can you type? And then we'll finally... Type in Aronian space Anon. Finally be free. What, where am I typing it? No, there. Uh, is that Aronian? over here? Yeah. That's not. Aronian. Oh. Yeah, it is. Space mm -hmm. Anon. All right, I already said 2013. Good. Enter. All right. I already knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Aronian, da da da. Mm -hmm. I think he's gonna lose now. America. I can't believe our one of our top American <laughs> players lost to Anand. Yeah. Terrible. Come on, Aronian. Oh, Aronian lost in the speed chess. I didn't get to see the speed chess championship. Dun, 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 I saw dun, dun. like 30 seconds or 20 seconds of Hanson. Is mm -hmm. it? Anyway. And he shall be leave on. Now, one of the benefits of playing for the world championship, other than becoming world champion, is you do a lot of preparation for the match. It doesn't matter who's playing whom. And when the match is over, 97% uh, of your prep didn't happen because you're preparing for everything and everything doesn't happen. So then after the match, over the next few years, your secret illegal preparation can be played, right? And this has happened many times with Anand because Anand's played in many world championships. So most of his preparation for Carlson and others, Galfan, Topolov, Kramnik, mm -hmm. didn't happen and so forth. And the most famous instance, of course, is the game between Botvinnik and Fisher, where they only played once. Bodvinik had secret illegal preparation for Smyslov, but it didn't happen mm -hmm. in the Smyslov match. Then he played it against Fisher. Then he finally got to the end where his team agreed that it was great for him, and Fisher made a move that none of them saw, and then Fisher's better. And then Fisher was winning, and then the game ended in a draw, and the game's been analyzed for 60 years. With the, well, like double queen ending and analyzed for a thousand moves and so forth. Okay. So this was all a non-secret illegal preparation. And by the time he was winning, he was like, well, I know I'm winning, but I don't know what to do. But, you know, I know I'm winning, so I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I liked your pen. Oh, I shouldn't have said the preparation was a secret. Oh, I shouldn't have said he was a customer. Oh, I definitely shouldn't have said it was illegal. Oh, it's too hot today. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Simpsons. Mm -hmm. It's cold in here. I agree. It is 72, but I agree. Can we turn it off? I just one. You can't. Just press that. <laughs> I tried. Just yeah. one degree. A war word declared. To make it cut off. <sighs> Terrible. Can okay. We? Now, this game is more complicated than Rubenstein's game. Okay. Before we start, can you, can you weigh in on Drainer's pun right here? Weigh in on it? Why? He's wanting you to comment on it. Okay, good. You do All like right. you don't like it? Yeah, it's like a B minus. No. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. All right, B plus. <laughs> okay, mm. sorry. Uh, yeah, this is the famous 2013 game. That's right. Yeah. 
Okay, so they played a semi-slav, which was the style at the time. Yeah, b5, bishop, d6 became popular about 10 years ago. Bishop d6 was a rare move you know, before. Okay, now in this position, Laronian did something bad. When I say bad, I mean the move is bad. I mean, Aronian, and he said afterwards what he did was dumb. I don't mean his moves, I mean his, his attitude. Mm. So, one of the things Carlson was worried about when he played world championship matches with Anand is Anand would have whole games memorized and he, there wouldn't be any moves played. So, like, you know, Carlson prepares and Anand prepares better. And Anand just keeps playing instantly after Carlson's prep is over because he, he considered Anand the best prepared player in the world. And he's, you know, prepare, he's playing world championship matches. He has a team of people. He was the first super GM to get super involved with chess base. So, you know, it was worrisome because Anand just knows the opening so deeply. So he was worried about that. And there actually was a game uh, where Anand won with White where he was winning out of his prep. It only happened like once, though. Okay, so Aronian, who does have a lot of prep, didn't have prep in this position, and Anand hasn't even started his prep yet because this is world championship prep. And so Aronian plays an aggressive move, but he's just, like, making it up. And Anand is just moving instantly because, you know, he's walking into Anand's prep. And the thing is, most of the prep you do is based on your opponent trying to beat you. So let's say that white plays rook b1 here, which does nothing. Well, he's not preparing for that. h3, he's not preparing for that. He's prepared for whatever is the most aggressive move for white, which I would say would be like e4 or knight g5, something that's like scary. And that's what Aronian played knight g5, attacking this pawn with a lot of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Anand ignored that and played c5. Now, this is Anand's preparation. And if you remember the last game, Rottweili Rubinstein, you can already see the, the parallelograms, right? Mm -hmm. There's the pillar, there, there they are. Yeah. So, not only, so, so, the, so this is lined up with this, and these guys are lined up here, and so, and, and knight g4 is not, nothing's defending g4. So, and these pieces are shallow and pedantic. So it, they're both attacking on the king's side, but black's going to have more force. Now, I'm not saying this is good for black. I'm sure that white's fine. It's just that Anand is like beginning his prep and Aronian's at the end. So that's... And later in the game, I'll tell you when, there was a move where Aronian thought 50 minutes. 5-0. That's called the Karen thing. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. So Aronian played knight h7. Obviously, if bishop h7, we just play king h8. Mm -hmm. Bishop h7 might be a better move, but that's neither here nor there. Hang on one second. Yeah. That was just a joke, Professor Elfin. It's not illegal. <laughs> All right, keep going. Thank you, Pat Zeres, for that sub. Three. Yeah, it's not, Ill it's not illegal, prep. All right. <laughs> it's, it's a Simpsons quote. This is scary. It's not scary if you've looked at it with all your seconds at computers for months and your opponent doesn't know it. That's less scary. Man. Yeah. <laughs> that would be frightened. Okay, so he played knight g4. So now if it's white's, if it's black's move, you know, we got queen h4 and bishop h2 check and, mm -hmm. and so forth, right? That's a lot of, that's a lot, you know, that's a lot of stuff is happening. Okay, the engine says f4 is the best move. That's what Aronian played. Cd4, opening up the rook. Ed4. All right, now, like this engine is at depth 21, so it's not, it's nowhere near the analysis Anand had. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, if it saw it actually at depth 22, it saw the best move. Now, obviously, if you don't know this position, you're never going to find the right move, ever. Never. And if you know it, you're going to forget the right move, right? Are, are you ready? Are you sitting yeah. down? Okay. Anand played bishop c5, confusing Karen. I mean, obviously, he's threatening bishop takes d4 check because, you know, bishop's mm -hmm. on c5. Now, in this position, Aronian thought 50 minutes, 
And here's the funny part. You want the funny part? He made a move, and then Anand made a move he didn't see. So when you think 50 minutes, you think you're going to see your opponent. No, yeah. he didn't look at it at all. <laughs> right. But it's a preparation. Okay, so let's analyze the normal move, taking the bishop, right? Mm -hmm. Always take everything. Okay. Now, knight takes, we're threatening the bishop, you agree, right? Yeah. Okay, and the problem is, where does the bishop go? Okay, and I talked to Axel Rosen, he didn't know. You get the reference? Um, where do we go now? Yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, like for example, if we save the bishop this way, for example, mm -hmm. queen d4 check, knight f2 check, and now we're threatening queen g2 mate, bishop g2 mate, and queen e1 with mate. So that's good for black. If we play bishop takes b5, so the queen is defending, we go check, and then knight e4. Look at this pin here. See that? Mm -hmm. and you can see that black's winning. I mean, black's threatening everything. I can't find a move that's not a threat. And the engine says black is plus 8. Okay, now Aronian, like, saw this position, and he looked and looked and looked, and he went, man, that's no good. <laughs> okay, and he's right. And the engine says bishop g6 is the best move, but still better for black. Okay, so Aronian played bishop e2, because the queen can't take there, and he wants to get rid of this knight. So he's like, let me get rid of that knight. Okay, and Anand made a move that Aronian didn't see. Still prep. Are you, are you sitting down? Mm -hmm. This is even stranger than bishop c5. Knight d e5. See, Anand defended his knight. <laughs> so he defends his knight, and now queen takes d4 is a serious threat. Now, just for your edification, okay, let's play a random legal move well, here. I'm only, I want to show you what black's threat is. And then mate. So you got to stop that. If it's Black's move, he would do that. Okay. So after knight d e5, which he didn't see, so he thought 50 minutes and I'm playing knight d e5. Truth hurts. Psychologically already lost. And Anand knew this was winning, but he didn't remember everything because Black had, White has like 700 legal moves. Now you see the engine analysis, which I'm sure Anand saw like three years before this game when he was playing matches with Carlson. Bishop takes g4 is the only move. Otherwise, it's plus 1,000. That's what he did. Bishop d4 check, knight g4. Okay, so material is actually equal here. Black hasn't sacrificed anything. And black's threatening queen h4, which is just death. And knight takes h2 is also death. And now, the bishops on these diagonals with the king on h1 and the knight on g4 looks like the Rottweil Rubenstein game. Oh. Okay, Aronian played the best move, knight takes f8. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. If black plays queen h4, which looks like it has unstoppable mate, it, it doesn't work, and now white is fine. White only has one move here where he's fine. Okay, and I don't mean Reuben fine, I mean his position's fine. Also Reuben fine. Um... Oh, you can't go there. And this move was suggested by the Indigo Girls. You know why? Uh, closer to, I don't know. Fine. Fine, yeah. Right. Now, hang on a minute. Um, I don't know. This is not like this is a very good move. I guess you have to go H3. H3 is good except for one thing. Checkmate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the pin. Mm -hmm. You like pins. But you can't go... Um... There's can't actually go. only one move that stops mate in one. That's the right move. Which is a tautology. The move that stops mate in one is the right move. Mm -hmm. G3 is good except for one thing, Gelu Animus, it's illegal. If it was legal, it would be okay. What about um, Queen... No. Well, queen h7. Queen h7, seven. that's the only move. That's not right. good. No, that's good. Yeah, the knight's defending it. Yeah. So you have to take, take, and the engine says it's about equal. 
Okay. Oh, he's going to lose another piece. Yeah. Well, you're up a lot of black sacrificing yeah. everything. Black sacrificed a rook already. See, the rook's gone. Okay. Now, Anand knew if he played queen here, white would play queen h7 check. So Anand stopped queen h7 check and played f5. Now he's threatening queen h4, then resigns. Aronian didn't want Anand to play queen h4, and Aronian wanted to save his knight. So, knight g6. So he can't play queen h4, and he saved his knight. Mm -hmm. Okay, queen f6, attacking the knight. If the knight moves, then queen here or queen here should both win. So the knight can't really move. Then I'm just going to take the knight and I'm going to win anyway. Because you can see this isn't so good. And the knight's pin too. Now this is, you can't, you can't get rid of black's pieces. Okay, so Ronian is completely lost here, but he went down without a fight. He didn't play well here. Psychologically crushed. Mm -hmm. He's white. He walks into prep. He's huge time disadvantage. He's getting crushed. He's playing an and. So psychologically, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he played h3, put it in h. Hey, Matthew. Says and Anand ignored it, because if you take the knight, then I have all these checkmates. Queen e2. Queen h5, threatening the aforementioned queen h3 mate. And now he blundered. The only move is rook f3. And then it says black is like plus three. But he blundered with queen d3, stopping this mate. Right? Mm -hmm. Then he did an interference. Mm -hmm. So you can see with these pieces here, it looks like the Rottweiler Rubenstein game. And then these are here. The king is here. Pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you want to play queen h3 mate, but the queen's defending it. So how do you interfere with the queen? Um. Let's see, 93? 93 okay, so actually works, but 93 does work. He played uh, the other way. Oh, bishop e3? Bishop e3, right. But 93 also is good. Yeah. Now we're threatening mate in one. And you can see what the engine says. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Karen's laughing because the numbers are pretty big. Pretty, pretty big. <clears throat> plus 15 for black. Mm -hmm. Now here, now let me explain something to the audience. It's not that Anand had great prep. It's not that Anand is Anand and plays perfect. That's, that's not what's interesting about this game. Let me tell you what's interesting about this game. Tell me. If this game was played 100, 120, 150 years ago, okay, and black was a famous player, like Morphe, and white was Doofus, Everybody would be like, yeah, White's doofus. Horrible. Didn't develop his pieces. Didn't defend right. Got crushed. Players back then were terrible. This is Aronian. So but the fact that it's Aronian, people are like, wow, Anand's the greatest player ever. But if this was doofus Morphe, they would say Morphe's no good. His opponent's a doofus. White played this game not great. The last 10 moves of the game... Aronian didn't defend perfectly. Queen e2 is not good. Queen d3 is not But, I mean, he's, he's shell-shocked because he's getting crushed over here. But it's very similar to the Rottweiler well, Rubenstein game, except bishop c5 and knight e5 are genius moves, but they were prep. Very hard to find over the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, the lesson is, you know, the players back then, like Rubenstein, Morphe, etc., Alaska, were great. But people just say people back then were bad and people now are good. That's... You know, everybody says Carlson's the best who ever lived because he's alive now. And in 40 years, when, you know, I'm long gone, people will say whoever the world champion is is the greatest player ever. Carlson, that's 40 years ago. He's no good. That's what they'll say. That's how, that's how they roll. <laughs> Terrible. Your takeaway is that you're bad, C.L. Smith? <laughs> no, Anand's a genius. I knew Anand before everybody was born. It was just me and Anand. So he was the best player in the world because I was second. Yeah, he beat Morphe and Aronian. So here Aronian resigned. Then when I was watching the game live, we were analyzing it live on chess.com. Me and Danny Wrench, if you can call Danny Wrench an analysis. Analyst. And then we got Anand on the show, and I talked to Anand for a long time. He showed the game. And then Danny said, you know, Vichy, like this is like this. And she's like, yeah, and like hung up. 
That was that was the best part of the interview. <laughs> like Danny tried to talk to Vish, and Vish is like, yeah, okay, click. Yeah, I don't know who you are. So that was that was funny. He knows who he yeah. is. You know, but he's not he's not a black actor, so he didn't care about him. Yeah. Oh no, he's mm-hmm. not like that. I bet he had a bad connection. Yeah, that's what it was. He's not like that. Yeah. He's like, let me give you this long speech about how great you are, and on click. He's like, I don't care what you say. Yeah. No, the truth does hurt. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I got I got Anand on the show like in a minute. Like it was, I mean, like Danny's like, what? How's Anand on our show? Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, he wants to talk about this game, obviously. Because that was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, go Vishy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I knew Vishy before the earth was here. And he actually stayed in our apartment in Belgium before. And the reason he stayed there was before Anand was super famous and before there were rules about things, Anand had to get a different visa for every country in Europe. And technically, if he went from European country A to European country B, if he went through European country C, he was supposed to get like a Mm -hmm. go through the country visa. And he wouldn't do that. And then when they would yell at him on the train, he would take out money. And he'd be like, I'm rich, bitch. And they'd be like, all right. Because they don't want like somebody from India who's homeless coming and staying in their country. And he's like, look at how much money. And they're like, okay, never mind. They don't care if you're rich. Like, yeah, you can have, you can stay here. <laughs> so, but he wasn't staying there. He was just going through. Now, of course, now you can get like an EU visa. Like you can go to, but th- then yeah. it was like, he was going to different embassies and consulates to get visas for a week. Cause he was going this, this and that and the other. And the funny story was he went to the Italian embassy and or consulate. Mm-hmm. And they said, why are you going to Italy? And he said, I'm playing in, in Linares. This big, oh, I'm sorry, not Linares. Linares. I'm playing in Reggio Emilia. Right. And, you know, and he said, here's my invitation. And the guy who organized the tournament, RIP, Enrico Enrico Paoli. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, Enrico Paoli, he's my good friend. The guy at the in in Belgium at the consulate. So Anand got a visa instantly. He's like, I know that guy. He's my good friend. (laughs) What What are the chances of that? 50 50. Yeah. Et cetera. Hey, it's almost time for you to get your stream fired up. Almost. Mm hmm. Yeah. Actually, I have to go because I didn't do anything yet. You didn't set it up? So you'll play a couple people and then I'll set up and get another period. Yeah, can you tell me, though, like when you're about to stream? Because I can't, <clears throat> this doesn't refresh. I'll stream in like six minutes. I got to set it up. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right, well, I'm not going to, I guess the chat will have to tell me then. Yeah, they know. Yeah. They they usually tell me. Then I can raise you. Do you offer okay. Chess All right, I'm going to play somebody if, while Ben's setting up. I can't um, go to sleep. So send me a three or five minute rated or unrated challenge. Oh, oh there's already some. You hit over 200 viewers. That was good. Yeah. Hey, push that off to there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I you escaped to sleep, without any tickling I about to incidents. Sleep. So that was good. All right, maybe one or two games. We'll just see how long it takes, Ben. I didn't see uh, you challenging, Demon Goat. Let me see. Oh, yeah, you are there. You are there. You are there. Okay, well, I can do two more games. (laughs) I have to go in order. You weren't first. I hear him in there singing. Oh, there you are. Unfortunately for you, yeah? Archer found your secret illegal stash of coke. Oh. So that's, that's the end of that. Aww. <laughs> you knew it was going to happen. Yeah. I can get to 
Honestly. Yeah, I hear them and they're singing. I can't get to sleep. Uh oh. And I'm behind on time. All right, last two games of the stream. Then I'll play Demon Goat and so forth. Yeah, that might have, I might have missed something there. Uh oh. You should. <laughs> All right, well, GG, Giant Killer. You, know, you shouldn't resign that with me because I always blunder pieces. And you might have gotten it back. Somebody tell me now if, um, if Ben streams because I can't even tell and I'm in, in the same two doors down drinking and having a party. <laughs> So, didn't, didn't like Castle Spencer Fine Gold, did not do it, didn't do it. <laughs> He's probably not there anymore. But if he is, I didn't do it. <laughs> Let's see. Do this. Do this. Darn, didn't even see that. I hear Ben singing. So I guess he is ready. Darn is handed a handed demon go to peace. The goat. Oh, there's a piece. Now I know he'll see it. The knight's just up there waiting there. Yeah, see, there he is. I knew it. I couldn't get lucky. Let's see. Couldn't do it. <laughs> All right, game's almost. We're going to be done soon. We're going to raid Ben. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I did. We missed Spencer, of course. But the Grandmaster brought it home. Filling in. Runaway night. Get on up in there. Runaway night. Never going back. Now let's see. I gotta move. I gotta move. Gotta go there. Darn, I didn't realize how close it was on time, too. I don't know why I didn't pre-move and why I didn't look at the time. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. GG, Demon Goat. All right, we're going to rape in right now. Don't know why. And that's the way it is. Just didn't do it. Did I spell it right? Yeah. All right. See you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this stream. I might be on Ben's stream too. I'm not sure. I do have other things to do. Bye.